Hello, and thank you for tuning into this week's Mayor's Update. As always, we have a lot of important information to share with you here today, so please feel free to share this video with your friends, family, relatives, and anyone else who you think may find this information helpful over the course of the next week. There have been several questions asked to both the Mayor's Office and the Board of Health here at City Hall regarding where the city stands in our vaccination process. The state is still in what's called phase one of our vaccine program. So that means right now we are still only vaccinating the uh, medical workers, uh, first responders, uh, different congregate care living facilities, and those particular job fields or residential situations where people are required to be close together. We cannot move on to phase two of our vaccination plan until the state says that we have that okay to do. And the state has said that they will not allow us to move to phase two until everyone statewide is ready to move to phase two. This is so that someone from Athol doesn't come over to Gardner to be vaccinated when Athol may still be in phase one and Gardner may be ready for phase two. And it's to prevent the smaller towns from being flooded from people from the larger cities who may be taking longer to go through their vaccination process. We cannot move on to phase two of our vaccination process until the state allows us to move on to that step. In phase two is where our senior citizens and our school workers will be vaccinated at that time. Now the state has separated senior citizens into people 75 and above and between the ages of 65 and 75 into two separate categories. Uh, however, they, those all still fall into the phase two category. So once we get the okay from the state to move to phase two, we will let everyone know at that time who is eligible, eligible to be vaccinated when that happens. However, until we get the okay from the state, we are not able to do that. Uh, please do consider signing up for our code red system though. We will put alerts out that way, but we just want to reiterate, signing up for code red does not mean you are signing up for only vaccination updates. If you sign up for our code red system, it lets you know of any emergency situations in the city. If there's ever a winter parking ban, uh, where there's a delay in trash pickup, if there's water shutoffs in the area due to planned maintenance. Uh, this is something that if you sign up for code red, you will get all of those. Uh, so it is a great system to be a part in anyway, uh, whether you want to be part of the vaccination, uh, want updates about the vaccination program or not. However, uh, again, to sign up for that, you go to the city's website, there's a button right there. And if you are still having issues after that, call the mayor's office and we can register you for that program as well. Several of our senior citizens who use our uh, senior center when it is open have contacted our offices to ask about the annual uh, senior tax work program that we have at the senior center where someone, uh, a tax accountant, comes in to assist seniors in filing their annual taxes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the staff at the senior center were supposed to book that service back in November and that was not done. However, we are in the process of contracting with a new tax attorney to be able to provide those services to the public to make sure that our seniors do have access to that service that we provide so that their taxes can get filed in an efficient manner. Uh, once we have that information available with this new contractor and what their start date is, uh, we will let our seniors population know through the usual channels that we have in the past on that one. And as has been done in the past, that service will be offered free to our seniors. Uh, but again, it's just the person who we had normally contracted with in the past um, was not booked at the period when they had their open scheduling. Uh, and now we have to find someone else. So once we do get that other person, we will be sure to let you know right away. The Rockwell Committee met this past week and voted to distribute $130,000 worth of grant funding to our school system, including $100,000 going toward renovating Landry Auditorium at Gardner High School. Uh, this is very exciting to see where it's just about the fifth year that this grant foundation has been put in place after we sold the Willie Gillis and Convoy painting that used to hang in Gardner High School back uh, under the previous administration. And to see the amount of good that it continues to give our students in our school system to help enrich their educational experiences that they're having over not only at Gardner High, but in every single one of our schools. So I want to thank the members of that committee who oversee those grant distributions uh, for the work that they've done and thank our teachers who continue to submit their applications to try to improve their educational offerings that they have for their students, even in a year as crazy as this one with everything that we've seen with the COVID-19 pandemic. So thank you very much to everyone involved in that process. Several people have asked about the Farmers to Family Food Box program. Uh, we were told by the federal government when we initially applied that we wouldn't hear anything back until at least January 19th. I understand January 19th has passed, however, we have still not heard back yet. 
when we hear back as to whether or not Gardner was accepted into that program, we will let you know. Uh, however, we just simply have not heard uh, an answer yet back from the federal government. Uh, as most of you can imagine, there are some changes that are happening at the federal level with the inauguration of President Biden this past week. Uh, so I'm sure once everything is settled and the uh, dust is all settled from that, we will know shortly after that. But until we know anything, uh, the food box program has and uh, been discontinued. Uh, we are hopeful that it will continue again at some point in the near future when we find out our application status at that time. Uh, the last thing we want to mention here is Governor Baker has announced that the uh, curfew that was temporarily put in place right before the Christmas holiday uh, on the stay-at-home order where businesses had to close early has been lifted by the Commonwealth as of January 25th at 9.30 p.m. Businesses are allowed to be open past the 9.30 deadline that was put in place to help uh, stop a bubble of the virus following the holiday season. So that is still in place. However, all of the gathering limits are still as they were, and the governor has said they will stay in that way until at least February 8th. Uh, all of that information can be found on www.mass.gov slash COVID-19 or on the different um, ways that the city has that information available on our city's website and our Facebook page. Uh, so if you have or if you're looking for any information as to where we stand in our reopening process, those are the avenues uh, to see that there. You can also contact our offices and we can help sort you through the different information that's out there. We understand that there's just so much being put out about the pandemic that it can be confusing to understand what's going on right now. So we're happy to help you in any way we can. Earlier this month, we went over to Haywood Hospital and officially signed the lease that the city council approved uh, for us for their $35 million expansion that they'll be doing to create new operating rooms for the first time since the 1960s. And uh, just to change things up a bit and keep things exciting, here is the video from us signing that lease and we'll be back soon after that program. Uh, a couple months ago before the city council uh, I submitted a proposal to have us lease a small portion of land that we owned off of Woodland Avenue to Haywood Hospital as well as work with them on a couple other different projects they have uh, to help them expand what they have to offer here in the city of Gardner with a 15 million dollar new investment by building a new surgical and outpatient wing uh, in addition to their hospital facility that they have here. Uh, so we are actually here to sign the lease and uh, the different votes that were from the City Council as well as the uh, release of the restrictive covenants that were on the deeds here to allow them to go forward with their project and to move forward. So this is something we don't really do that often but for big projects that make a big difference in what we have here in the city it's something that we just like to highlight to let you all know what's going on. Uh, ironically just this morning uh, a couple of us went and toured the site of the new school building project and what that has to do with why we're here today is I put the proposal to purchase the last piece of land to build a new school before the City Council the same day that we submitted the proposal to lease this land to Haywood Hospital. And one of the things that I was thinking about when we submitted that to the Council last October is this is a hundred year lease uh, and it's going to allow Haywood to build a new wing that's going to affect the people in this community for years and decades to come just like our new school and we're doing something today that's going to outlive everyone who's in this room and it's going to be doing something that's going to outlive most people in the community and just get back and make a difference in the city for longer than we could ever know and that's our job in the community is to make a difference and to work to make Gardner a unique place that's going to be in that situation for years to come but Without further ado, I'd like to introduce the president and CEO of Haywood Healthcare, Wynn Brown, who's going to say a couple words as well. Thank you. Thanks, Wynn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate it. Appreciate you being here today. It really is an exciting uh, moment as we sign the documents to um, allow the lease of land to allow Haywood Hospital to expand and build a new surgical pavilion. Our ORs on this campus were built and designed by Ken Pierce, who's a member of our board. His father was a longtime physician here, and they were designed and built in the 60s. Uh, and the types of services that we provide, the technology that we use today, we have outgrown those um, long-term ORs, and we need to make a major investment. I don't like to want, ever want to correct you, but it is actually a $35 million construction project uh, that we are doing on this campus, in addition to a, almost a $20 million energy infrastructure project, which will make us 
uh, an incredibly green hospital, probably one of the greenest in New England, and also allow us that project to island and in in, uh, be energy independent in the case of a, some sort of catastrophe that might happen. So major investments that we could not do because of the way we are landlocked on this campus. So I just want to thank uh, the City Council for its support as we move forward to continue to modernize this, this hospital. So it is the city's hospital, it is the region's hospital. We are community owned and we're very proud of that and this allows us to continue forward on that path as we provide state-of-the-art services to make sure people can be cared for right here in the community. So thank you for that uh, support, uh, not only from the mayor and, and, the, and the city council president, but uh, the community as a whole and city council. We couldn't do it without you and we are really in your debt and look forward to a groundbreaking hopefully this coming fall where we can celebrate this next phase of growth and advancement for your locally owned hospital. Thank you very much, everybody. However, that's it for this week's update. Thank you all for tuning in. Until we speak again, please continue to watch out for yourself and others. Keep track of your own mental and physical health during these trying times. Try to do something to relax and get your mind off of the craziness that's going on right now in the world that you see on the news uh, and in everything else that's going on. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you all very much and have a great day.